It was the year of the elephant. Abraha and his army were crushed by divine intervention. It was the day when 14 galleries of Kisra's palaces fractured and crumbled. The day the sacred fire of the Magians extinguished. It was the day the churches near Lake Sawa sank and collapsed. It was the day when a radiant light emanated from Amina's body, illuminating palaces in Syria. It was the day the leader of all prophets, Muhammad peace be upon him, was born in Makkah. Bismillahi wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. There is some disagreement regarding the precise date in year of the birth of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. While some affirm it to be 570 AD, others contend that it occurred in 571 AD. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the master prophet, was born in Bani Hashim tribe in Mecca on a Monday morning, specifically on the ninth day of Rabiul Awwal. This event coincided with the year of the elephant incident and marked the 40th year of Kisra's Husru no Sherwan reign. In Tabqat ibn Sa'd, it is narrated by ibn Sa'd that the mother of Muhammad stated, When he was born, a radiant light emanated from my body, illuminating the palaces of Syria. According to al bayhaqi notable signs accompanied the birth of Muhammad. 14 galleries of Kisra's palace fractured and crumbled. The sacred fire of the Magians extinguished and certain churches near Lake Sawa sank and collapsed. In Asira and Nabawiya, Ibn Hisham recounted that following the joyous occasion, the mother of Muhammad promptly dispatched someone to notify his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. Delighted, Abdul Muttalib came to her took the infant to al kaaba offered praise to Allah and expressed gratitude. It was Abdul Muttalib who bestowed upon the baby the name Muhammad, a name uncommon among the Arabs at that time. Observing the customary practices of the Arabs, he circumcised the baby on the seventh day. The first woman who nursed him following his mother was Suweba. The prevalent tradition among urban dwelling Arabs was to send their infants to Bedouin wet nurses. The practice aimed to provide them with the opportunity to flourish in the open and wholesome environment of the desert, fostering robust physical development and adopting the pure language and manners distinctive to the Bedouin culture. Bedouins were renowned for the purity of their language and the absence of vices commonly associated with settled societies. Later, the Prophet peace be upon him was placed under the care of Halima binti Abi Zuhayb from Bani Saad bin Bakr. Her husband, also from the same tribe, was al Haris bin Abdul Uzza, known as Abi Kabasha. Halima, the foster mother of the Prophet wasallam, recounts their challenging financial circumstances prompting the need to nurse a baby for compensation. In a year of drought, with no food to eat, she and other women embarked on a journey to Mecca to find infants to breastfeed. When Muhammad was born, everyone declined to accept him due to his orphan status. No woman was willing, fearing they wouldn't be adequately compensated. Halima initially declined to accept Muhammad. However, unable to find another baby, she consulted her husband and together they decided to take in Muhammad hoping for blessings. Halima explains that due to the drought and scarcity of food, her breast had no milk. Surprisingly, when she held Muhammad in her arms, her breast produced enough milk to nourish both the baby and his foster brother. Halima further shares that they owned a she-camel with no milk. However, on the same night, after her husband milked the she-camel, it yielded an abundance of milk, satisfying them all. Subsequently, they, along with the babies, experienced a deep and restful sleep, a stark contrast to their previous nights of struggle to sleep. In addition, their land flourished with vegetation and their animals became healthy and robust. Halima says, My husband exclaimed, 
by Allah. Halima, we have indeed welcomed a blessed child, to which I responded, by the grace of Allah, I sincerely hope so. When Muhammad reached the age of two, Halima asked his mother if he could stay with them for an extended period, allowing them to continue enjoying the blessing they had experienced because of him. After numerous requests, Muhammad's mother Amina agreed and he remained with them for a span of four to five years. Muhammad spent five years with Banu Sa'ad under Halima's care, where he developed a healthy body and experienced rapid growth. In a notable incident during his playtime with other children, Jibreel appeared to Muhammad. Jibreel took him, threw him down, opened his chest, extracted his heart and removed a lump, declaring, this is Satan's portion of you. Following that, Jibreel bathed him in a basin crafted from gold using the water of Zamzam. After sealing his chest, he returned him to his original location. The other boys playing with him hurried to his nurse mother, Halima, shouting that Muhammad has been harmed. Upon reaching him, they discovered him looking pale. This alarming incident frightened Halima and her husband, prompting them to return him to his mother, Amina. Most scholars attributed the surgical intervention by the angel Jibreel or Gabriel is physical surgery so as to protect the Prophet ﷺ from Satan. However, Muhammad al-Ghazali, an influential Egyptian Islamic scholar, author and teacher in his well-known work titled Fiqh Sira interprets the operation a spiritual intervention rather than a physical surgery. Whichever interpretation you may agree with, there is consensus among the scholars that the operation was protecting the Prophet of Allah from all evils. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad. Remember, sharing a good word is a charity. May Allah protect you wherever you are. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.